A mentor of mine once warned me not to get so busy in life that I just kind of rush through everything and not think. I have this tendency to, to just kind of wake up in the morning, get going on my task, kind of rush from one thing to the next without really stopping to think about what I'm doing, you know, whether I actually should be doing what I'm doing or, or whether I want to be doing what I'm doing. I just kind of do it, you know, you just get into the day. And, and man, it's like every once in a while I need to just kind of get away from my own little world and, and just pull away and escape and think for a moment. I mean, I mean, stop and think about life right now. Stop and think about the fact that right now you and I are standing on a giant ball that's spinning at a thousand miles an hour. Am I the only one that thinks this is weird? <laughs> the fact that we're, we're flying around this ball of fire that's like a million times our size. We're flying around this thing at 67,000 miles an hour and we just go, yeah, it's just another day. This <laughs> isn't another day. There's nothing normal about it. This place is amazing. It's gorgeous. Don't miss it. Think about these bodies we're living in right now. I mean, the way we're created to feel. You know the, the feelings you get when you first fall in love and you just want to scream to someone, you feel like something inside you is welling up? Or, or, or the feelings you get in relationship, like for me it's with my daughters and I tell you, when I hug them, you know, it, it's like I, I've got all this emotion inside where I just want to squeeze them to death and scream out how much I love them. I'm just crazy about them. What is that? And, and, and even, even things like laughter, okay? Like, like most people never even think about laughter, but to me it's like, you know when you laugh, whether you're a person that just, you know, just laughs your head off or you're one of those people that just kind of goes, <coughs> you know, and you're trying to hold it in. I mean, what is that? What? I mean, stop it. To me, that points to God. That makes me think, you know what? That is amazing that God would create something like laughter. Now the Bible says there's no way you can experience all this, feel all this, and see all this, and then go, ah, I think it just was all an accident. I, I think it just came from nowhere. There's no way. The Bible says that you have no excuse, no excuse for not believing in God, because you can see God in everything. And I know when I talk about the Bible, people cringe because it just seems like every time you hear someone talk about the Bible, you get this feeling like they're trying to take something from you. You know, and some will flat out say, yeah, yeah, I want your money, but it's like, you got to understand that the whole message of the Bible is not about this God in heaven who wants to take from you. It's about this God who wants to give to you. I mean, the fact that the creator, the one who made all this, actually loves us and wants to give to us. And, and if you miss out on that, you're going to miss the whole point of your life. The message of the Bible isn't about how there's this awful being up in heaven who's given us these harsh commands that, that he just forces upon us. I mean, even his commands, it, people talk about them like they're a bad thing when his commands are a gift to us. They're a necessary thing. When he says, thou shall not murder, he's just saying, look, you know, I think your life on earth would be better if you don't kill each other. When he says, don't steal, don't rip each other off, he's saying, you know, this would be such a better place to live if you guys didn't rip each other off, you didn't lie to each other, you just kind of were honest with each other. And, and, and he says, you know, if you could love each other as much as you love yourself, this, this place would be amazing. But, but we look at these commands like they're an awful thing when in reality we know in our hearts that these are good laws. They're necessary. That's, that's why we get annoyed. We get angry when when someone violates these laws because it's a violation of us. It's, it's hurting us, it's hurting someone else. We get angry, we, we even want to see justice. It, you know, there are times when you just want, you, you almost want to see the wrath of God poured out on someone for, for violating these laws because it's destructive. And God's saying, you know what, these laws are for you. I, I think where it gets tough is when we start looking at ourselves and we start thinking, okay, what about me? Like, when I think about myself, I know I've broken these commands. I, I've broken a lot of the commands. And, and honestly, there's a side of me that freaks out, thinking, you know, what, what would it feel like to stand before this, this, this awesome, amazing God one day and, and, and have Him question me? I, I used to not think about it a whole lot because I used to feel like I was a pretty good person. 
I feel like, you know, compared to a lot of other people, I'm good. You know, it's kind of like when you're in high school. Remember when, uh, when you get in a classroom and the teacher would say, I'm going to grade the class on a curve, and you, you look around the class, you see some people that, you know, just aren't as sharp as you, and you, you kind of breathe a sigh of relief because you know that compared to them, you're totally fine. Well, I feel like we do the same thing with judgment. It's like we, we look around and we try to find the most evil people we can find in the world, and we'll say, gosh, that's so wicked, God's going to judge them, and... What it does is it makes us feel okay about ourselves because compared to them, we look pretty good. The problem with this, though, is that God's not going to grade us on a curve. It's not like God's going to line us all up and say, you know what, you guys are more wicked than those guys, so you guys are the bad people, you're going to go to hell, and you guys are the good people, you're going to go to heaven. That's not what God's judgment's all about. It's about Him lining us up to his law and as he goes through his law it's really not going to take a whole lot of time before you realize that you're guilty so think about this God created you and I he gives us these laws we break his laws so at the end of our lives he has every right to punish us as severely as he sees fit he's the creator and so if our lives ended that way with his punishment That'd be perfectly fair, perfectly just. But I'm going to tell you the most amazing truth in the world, and you've got to get this. Listen, if you haven't heard a single thing I've said this whole time, you've got to hear this. Despite everything you've done in your life, God still loves you. And He doesn't want to punish you. In fact, in the greatest act of love ever, God Himself had His Son come down on the earth, take the form of a man, and be nailed to a cross. You see, Jesus was taking the punishment for our sins. If no one was punished, God would have been unfair because a crime was committed. But the crazy thing is that you and I are guilty. We're the ones that messed up. And then God has His own Son punished for us. Why? The Bible says it's because He loves us that much. You guys, this is the most amazing truth in the world. The God of the universe loves you. I used to think that I understood the love of God. I used to think that I, I, I believed this stuff. And then, and then I had kids. And one day the, the thought crossed my mind, what would it feel like if I saw one of my daughters nailed to a cross? <laughs> it absolutely drove, it, it made me sick. It drove me crazy. I mean, try to think about the person that you love the most on this earth and think about them being nailed, being crucified on a cross. It's horrifying. And to think that God, God, the Creator, went through that for me. You guys, it's just, it's amazing. Think about it. What else in life even compares to this? Seriously. I, I mean, it feels so good just to be loved by anyone, but to think that the Creator of all of this loves me that intensely, because that's what makes life worth living. This is awesome. So you have to make a choice. See, God right now wants to have a relationship with you. He wants to forgive you. Regardless of anything you've done in your life, He wants you. But you've got to choose to accept Him. Now, there's a lot of people who think that they're good, think that they are, quote-unquote, good people. The problem is that we're not going to get to judge ourselves. It doesn't matter what you think about yourself. It doesn't matter what does God think about us. It's not like there's this 
little old man at the end of your life that's gonna stand on this you know little pedestal and go hey what'd you think of yourself and you go oh, I thought I did a pretty good job no when the Bible talks about God and what we face up to at the end it says that there's this this massive God on this throne and even the angels are covering themselves up with their wings and screaming out how holy he is we stand before that God and it's that God that's gonna look at you look at his law and I'm telling you you're not gonna come out innocent it's not this this partially guilty no it's, it's either guilty or innocent and we're all gonna be found guilty the thing is, is, it's that same God that's saying, I don't want to punish you. I want to forgive you. I want a relationship with you. What I'm talking about isn't a religion. It's not about joining some cult or religion. It's just talking to your Creator, having a relationship with Him. In fact, God says, we become His bride. It gives that picture of a bride. It's a picture of intimacy. It's a picture of love. It's a picture of a relationship that's, that's greater than any relationship we can experience as human beings. It's intimacy with our Creator. It's almost as though the God of the universe is proposing to you right now, saying, look, I love you. I want to forgive you. I want to spend eternity with you. Man, I'll wipe out everything. He says he'll forgive you as far as from the east is from the west all the way to the depths of the ocean. He goes, man, that's where all the garbage from the past is. We'll just put it behind us and let's start this new relationship. God's begging you. It's like he's on a knee, you know, handing you this ring and saying, man, will you take me? Will you enter into a relationship with me, almighty God? And you have to say, I do. That's it. It's saying, yes, God, I do. Man, if you hear anything I'm saying, don't go running to some minister or this or that. Just, just, just get on your knees or just go. Get alone with God and just say to your Creator, you know what? I love you. I know that I've messed up, but now I understand your son paid for that. That blows my mind. I want to spend eternity with you. I want to begin this relationship. I want to follow you. But don't just say it. Don't just say, okay, God, I'll follow you because I tell you, there are people all across America right now that say, yeah, I believe in God. Yeah, I follow Him. And then you look at their lives and it, it doesn't show. Jesus said, if you really knew me, you would obey my commands. I mean, it, it, it's, it's this idea of trust, saying, you know what? I trust this God. He's done everything for my good. He's given me life. He's given me His laws. He's given me forgiveness. And so I believe his commands are going to be for my good. See, that'll show by your lifestyle. Look, this isn't my message. This is the message of the Bible. It's God's love letter to you. See, these aren't just random thoughts that you can casually give or take. Your whole eternal destiny rides on this. You can know today for sure that you're going to heaven. It's not Jesus plus good works. It's not Jesus plus rituals. It's just Jesus alone. It's not Jesus or something else. God's provided one way to escape His wrath and enjoy friendship with Him forever. The God of the universe is crazy about you and screaming out for your attention. So don't just walk away and go back to your routine. This could be the greatest day of your life. Stop and think.